Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome. We're so glad you were able to join us today. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you some information about our agency, Starbridge. We partner um, with people with diverse disabilities and their families and those who support them. And we're looking to help them achieve success in education, employment, and healthy living opportunities. Below is our web address, www.starbridgeinc.org. Or if you have any questions or um, need assistance, you can call us at 585-546-1700. Here at Starbridge, we touch the lives of more than 10,000 people each year. We serve mostly the greater Rochester and Finger Lakes regions here in New York State. And just below are just a few of the programs and things that we can do to assist families through special education, navigation, advocacy, employment, self-direction, fiscal intermediary services, as well as workshops, webinars, and conferences. And again, if you're looking for information to connect with us, you can um, reach us on the website. My name is Laura Arrington, and I'm in, I am the Family and Youth Education Coordinator here at Starbridge. I'm going to show you just a few tech tips before we get started. And one of them, I'm going to show you how to use the control panel, where to find the handouts, and we have many great handouts for today's webinar. And there will be a link and to a survey monkey you'll get an email about an hour after this webinar if you could please fill that out that helps us show our funders that we're serving families if that control panel is in your way you can click on that orange button and it will collapse that and move that out of your way if you'd like to ask questions, and we do welcome questions today, and Erin will be answering them at the end of the webinar. And uh, you can type your questions in the chat box. If um, I only see them, so I will read them as they come in to Erin. If you're having trouble joining us or hearing the information, click on the mic and speaker, you can test it. If that still doesn't work, if you click on the telephone link, it will give you a number to call in so you can see it and hear it at the same time. Our handouts are right below and we have several today as well as a copy of this PowerPoint. So please um, feel free to click on those and save those. So we always like to know who's joining us today, and we just have a few questions. And of course, the first one is, well, who's joining us? Are you a parent or a family member, an individual with a disability, education professional, human service provider, or other? And just so you know, um, sometimes you are a parent and you're also a professional. So I would say whichever role you're joining us today. And I'll just give it one more moment so everyone has an opportunity who wants to, to vote. Great. Let me close that poll and I'll share those results. So 50% are parents and family members, and the other 50% are human service providers. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. The next question we have is, what is the age of the family member or maybe the family or person that you're supporting is? Are they zero to eight years old, nine to 14 years of age, 15 to 21, or are they over 21 years of age? And I'll give everyone just one more moment to go ahead and, and vote so everyone has an opportunity who wants to vote. Okay, I'm gonna close that poll. Let me share the results. It looks like 75% are zero to eight years of age. Another 75% have nine to 14 year olds, 50% have 15 to 21, and 25% have over 21 years of age. So we have such a wonderful diverse um, age group today. And Erin's uh, information definitely covers all of these age groups. So we're so glad that you're able to join us. And Erin um, wanted to know, do you currently have a dentist? And the question is, could, uh, yes or no. 
and we'll give everyone just a moment to click on that because even if you do we hope we can provide you some great information let me close that poll and share the results and it looks like a hundred percent said yes they currently do have a dentist so we wanted to thank you so much i'm going to hide that poll for you um, for sharing that information and in just a moment I will be handing it over to Erin, who is going to share with us taking the stress out of trips to the dentist with all of you. And we're looking forward to it. And Erin, I see your uh, PowerPoint. So when you're ready, feel free to begin. All right. Thank you, Laura. Welcome, everyone, to the webinar. In joint um, conjunction with Eastman Institute for Oral Health and Starbridge. We are very excited to present this and I hope you are excited as well. So today's lecture is entitled Taking the Stress Out of Trips to the Dentist, Supporting Our Patients with Special Needs. I am Dr. Erin Imani and I am a first year pediatric dental resident at the Eastman Institute for Oral Health. So today's agenda for the webinar is broken into three parts. The first is an overview of services that are available at the Eastman Institute for Oral Health. The second part discusses strategies for a successful dental appointment. And the third part of the webinar is tips for good oral hygiene practices at home. So who is Eastman Institute for Oral Health or EIOH? We, um, improve oral health care through caring, discovery, teaching, and learning. We have been around for over 100 years. We were originally named the Rochester Dental Dispensary. We re were renamed Eastman Dental Dispensary in 1942. In 1978, we moved to our current address at 625 Elmwood Avenue in Rochester, New York. In 1997, we became a partner with the University of Rochester Medical Center and now became partners providing oral health care to our patients. In 2009, we renamed ourselves again, changing from the Eastman Dental Center to the Eastman Institute for Oral Health. And attached on one of your handouts, we have a map of where Eastman Dental is located. So, EIOH has many departments. Most of them are located on the first or second floor of the building. And these are all the special dental care aspects we serve. The one that I think is worth mentioning here is oral and maxillofacial surgery. Since I'm sure many of you may have a child and you're worried about wisdom teeth, they are the only department that is not located as, at the Eastman building. They are located at Strong Memorial Hospital on the fourth floor via the silver elevators. We also have a detailed description of these 10 departments in another one of your handouts. The one department I am going to focus on today is the pediatric dentistry department where I am from. We do serve all children under the age of 18, including those with medically complex and special health care needs. We provide all kinds of comprehensive dental care, which I'll explain further in another slide. We also do nasoalveolar molding treatment for infants that are born with cleft lip and palate. So again, the pediatric dentistry department is located on the first floor of Eastman, which is on 625 Elmwood Avenue. We are open Monday through Friday from 8.45 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we do take a lunch hour between the hours of 12.30 and 1.30. So who are we? We are 14 dental resident doctors who are supervised by multiple attending pediatric dentists and assisted by dental assistants who are skilled in working with the pediatric and special health care needs populations. As I've mentioned before, we do see children under the age of 18, including with those with medically complex and special health care needs. We see around 2,400 patients visits per year per resident. That's well over 30,000 visits total. And about a quarter of those are specifically for medically complex and special health care needs patients. 
So this is another picture of our clinic. So what do we look like? We have 12 dental chairs and an open air rotunda setting. And right now it's operating at half capacity due to COVID six feet standard protocols. We do have three private operatories that are equipped for nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas, and oral conscious sedation. We have one private room for hygiene appointments. And we also have one private room for very young children under the age of five. It is important to mention that all COVID safety protocols are being followed in the clinic, including the rotunda. We do have all of the proper PPE as well. So services that we offer at Eastman include comprehensive dental care. That includes exams, x-rays, cleanings, fluoride treatment, fillings, baby teeth crowns, extractions. We also do something called silver diamine fluoride treatment or SDF. And what SDF is, is a liquid that we can put on a cavity that isn't too big and we can stop the cavity in its tracks. So that allows us more time to plan for the treatment, best treatment for your child. We do offer emergency services on a walk-in basis every day, Monday through Friday, when we are during our hours of operation. We offer nitrous oxide or laughing gas as well, but that is by appointment only. We do offer oral conscious sedation as well. We do not offer IV sedation. We do refer to the operating room, again, by appointment only. And we do refer to the other dental specialty departments within Eastman. So why should you choose us? We are all specifically trained in advanced behavior guidance techniques. We work with special and healthcare needs children every day of clinic. Another advantage is we have the ability for continuity of care. So what that means is when your child comes to Eastman and they see a specific doctor, you can request that doctor to see your child again. The doctor will give you a card, a checkout appointment card, and they will write their last name at the bottom of the card. So the front desk staff knows to schedule you with the same provider. We do have a portable x-ray sensor and a camera for those who are unable to sit or stand for conventional x-rays. We do offer private rooms. Another thing we offer is 24 hour emergency pediatric dental coverage at Strong Memorial Hospital. Another great advantage of us is we accept all insurances, including Medicaid plans. I do make the disclaimer to contact your insurance company just to ensure acceptance at Eastman, as well as to confirm treatment costs. Other things of note that we offer, we do have ramp access to both entrances at Eastman, and we also have a convenient parking garage located directly next to us called Law 13, and it has a $6 a day daily rate fee. Moving into the second part of the webinar, which is preparing for a successful dental visit. So these are the things that we found important for you to bring to the first appointment. The first is the medical history. I want to make sure I'm addressing all of your dental concerns, and I want to make sure that we spend enough time on that and not necessarily talking 20 minutes about the medical history, especially if your doctor or provider doesn't use e-record, which we do have access to, that's important for us to make sure we keep your child safe. We, we do ask you to bring a list of all medications to make so, sure that none interfere with treatment. And we would ask you to bring the names and the numbers of all doctors involved with your child's care, whether that be their primary care doctor or a specialist. And things you should tell us, any behavioral concerns for your child. If they don't like being approached in a certain way, if they don't like bright lights, loud noises, all important for us to know before we begin. Also important for us to know is if stress triggers another medical condition or an emergency so we can adequately prepare. So what do we do at your first dental visit? We do do a comprehensive dental exam. We do a cleaning. 
if applicable. We do go over oral hygiene instruction, how to brush and floss teeth. We do take x-rays if we can. We apply fluoride. We also apply silver diamine fluoride once we have the discussion about that and you feel it's also good for your child. Other things we offer are nutrition counseling, eating the proper foods and drinks to reduce our cavity risk, tobacco counseling if applicable, oral piercing counseling again if applicable, referrals to other departments at Eastman, referral to the operating room again if applicable, and we do make a treatment plan for future dental visits. Now what a treatment plan is, is it's an individualized plan for your child that plans what dental care they will need for future appointments, whether that be a filling, an extraction, that also takes into account any adjuncts that we may need, like laughing gas or oil conscious sedation. Other considerations. Uh, no food or drink prior three hours prior to the laughing gas appointment, and also no food or drink after midnight prior to using conscious sedation. If your child is in need of an emergency appointment, consider having them not have food or drink three hours prior to the appointment if you think that nitrous oxide will be good for them. Finally, other things to consider bringing to the appointment are headphones, sunglasses, a change of clothes. I say a change of clothes as oral conscious sedation can relax all of the muscles, including the bladder muscles. So it's always good to have an extra set on hand just in case. And finally, consider reviewing our dental visit social story, which we have attached in the handouts as well. Now on to our third and final part of the webinar, tips for good oral hygiene at home. Now, I will mention uh, various products. I do make the disclaimer that Eastman and myself do not endorse the use of any specific product and Eastman nor myself hold any financial interest in any of the companies for these products. So if you're struggling to brush your child's teeth in the bathroom, don't feel confined to the bathroom. You can brush teeth wherever they are comfortable. If it's the chair, if it's the couch, if it's the car, you can brush teeth anywhere. I also like to mention the top right photo. As you notice, the parent or caregiver's hands is behind the patient. If you have trouble stabilizing your child's head, it's very easy to come from behind. So you're able to cradle the head, as well as have access to brush the teeth. I know some children don't like being approached with a toothbrush, so it, it can be good to come from behind. Now, what if your child hates the flavor of all toothpaste? You've tried cherry, you've tried bubble gum, you've tried mint, you've tried fennel. They do make a flavorless toothpaste. Now, I caution you, there are flavorless toothpastes out you know, on the market at the grocery store, but I've yet to find one that has fluoride. The only one that I found with fluoride is called Oranurse, which is sold at amazon.com. It's about $11 for one tube and about 30 for six tubes. Now, difficulty keeping your child's mouth open? I've had parents, and I've suggested to parents, use a teething toy. Uh, to help keep their child's mouth open if they want to munch and clamp down. We don't want them to bite your fingers. The advantage of this is that it does give you some ability to turn the toy to allow them to open the mouth more. The other good part, especially during COVID times, it's something that can be washed and cleaned. Now, if you have an older child and you know that they are not going to munch on a teething toy, you could try a chilled washcloth. That would also be a good alternative for them to bite on while you brush their teeth. Now, if your child really likes physical stimulation and touch, consider using an electric toothbrush. I find that children really enjoy the vibration. 
Um, it is important to note that you should change your toothbrush according to the American Dental Association every three to four months or your brush head or sooner if the bristles are frayed and again sooner if your child has recovered from a recent illness. Now what if you have limited time to brush your child's teeth? There is something called the three-sided toothbrush it brushes the front of the tooth by the cheek and the lips. It brushes the top of the tooth or the biting surface. It also brushes the backside by the tongue. So it is sold at Amazon or Walmart from a company called Dentrust. Now, if your child again likes that physical stimuli and they like that vibration, they do have an electric toothbrush version that is made by a company called Triple Bristle. And that's about $70 and they are an online company. Now, if you're still trying to improve your child's brushing, I might suggest you consider working with an occupational therapist because they are really skilled in the daily living activities. I worked with one who helped one of my patients um, be able to brush better. So for this patient, they were wheelchair bound. And although they had the physical ability to brush their teeth, they couldn't see themselves in the mirror brushing at the counter where the, um, the patient resided. So the occupational therapist taught this patient how to hoist their arm up to onto the counter lift the patient's head up so they could see in the mirror and then brush accordingly. We've had really great success with that. We decreased plaque, we have healthy gums, and we don't see them as frequently now because they are doing such a great job brushing. Now, another thing that we do talk about at the dental visit is nutrition counseling. So if you're having difficulty getting your child to eat healthy, um, consider working with a psychologist or a psychiatrist if you're looking to expand their textures or tastes. Um, now, we understand if frosted flakes are the only thing your child eats, we get it. We do, we do. So if that's the case, not to worry. What we would do is see your child on a more frequent basis to make sure their teeth are clean, and have more frequent checks for cavities. And finally, our contact information for the Pediatric Dental Department at Eastman. Our mailing address is, again, 625 Elmwood Avenue in Rochester, New York. Our phone number is 585-275-5051, and that is for appointments, and it can also be routed uh, for questions. We look forward to seeing you, of course. And thank you, everyone. And I would like to open the floor for questions, and I will send it back to Ms. Laura. Great, thank you. And one of the things, um, we do have several questions, and I'll also give um, everyone time to um, also formulate some more questions. I am going to put my um, email address at, here at Starbridge in the chat box. If you have questions today that you feel are maybe private and personal, you don't have to email me private and personal um, a question, but I will then pass on your information to Erin who will then reach out to you and help you with your specific um, situation. So let me just put that in there. And I will send that out to everyone and everyone should be able to see that. So if you have a more detailed or a private question, just email me here at Starbridge to that email address and then I will share that um, with Erin as well. Um, so our first question is, do you do orthodontics like braces there at the Eastman Institute for Oral Health? We do. We do have an orthodontics department right next to us on the first floor of Eastman. They do accept Medicaid patients just as we do. And they have also treated children with special needs and are quite good at it as well. Great, thank you. The next question is, um, this family struggles to um, help their child floss their teeth. 
Um, their current dentist um, is stressing to them how important it is to floss. Do you have any suggestions on helping them get better at flossing or helping their child to floss? Uh, flossing's a tough one, especially when you have a limited time to get into the mouth with your standard floss. They do make something called an access flosser that's made by Listerine, and that has a long handle that I found some patients do really well with because you have um, more control over getting into the crevices. So I found a long-handled flosser is the way to go. Great, thank you so much, Erin. Um, my next question that we have is, do you do, um, and actually there's kind of a two part, two people have sure. uh, slightly different, so I'll, I'll ask. Do you do sedation for a dental visit, and would you do sedation for a cleaning at a dental visit? We do do oral conscious sedation. So oral conscious sedation, oral conscious sedation is more of um, almost like a light sleep. Um, it's not, we don't do IV sedation, which I think some parents um, look for because that has, if you do IV sedation, that has some more amnestic pro properties than oral conscious sedation does, although there are some with that. Um, I have not seen anyone be sedated for a cleaning. Um, I found, I think most for that we have sent to the operating room, but again, it's a case by case basis. And again, whatever the parent is comfortable with. We don't sedate on an emergency basis. That's something I think is worthwhile mentioning as well. It can be done, permitting that your child is within the weight and age parameters for oral sedation. Great. Thank and of course, it's healthy for them. Thank you. And um, they have a follow-up uh, question. How of much course. longer or how long is an appointment when sedation is involved? That is a question that I wish I could give a better answer to because I, as a first year uh, dental resident, don't do sedations, the second years do. If I'm remembering properly, it's I, you would set aside a morning for it. It's approximately two to three hours. The appointment itself is very short in terms of the actual dental work. What takes the more time is letting the sedative effect wear off. So that would be something that you would set aside a morning for just to be safe. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is uh, their child, um, it's very important for them to see and touch the equipment prior to the going into their mouth. Um, yes. Is that something that they could do or is it, how could we, they do that? Absolutely, we are big into tell, show, do showing the child what we are using, allowing them to play with it. Of course, making sure, for example, if it's the drill, we're not going to put the little sharp part in that you know helps us get the cavity out. But we would allow them to depress the button, hold it. If they need more control, we also allow them to hold the suction because I know some children love to be very involved and then it makes them feel like they're in control. We allow that as well. Great, thank you. Um, one person asks um, if they were thinking about changing dentists, would they be able to view or see or do a tour so that their child knew where they were going prior to the visit? Absolutely, that would be something if you were interested in, I would have you give your contact information to Lara and then who would give that to me and I would set something up for you. So that way you can make your child more comfortable with the setting since it's new, different sounds, different sights from your previous dentist if, that, if you so choose. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is my child has a favorite stuffed animal that they bring everywhere yes. with them. And their current yes. dentist due to COVID feels uncomfortable with that. Is that something they could bring to a dental visit? Absolutely. For us, if it makes the child comfortable, by all means, bring it. Great, thank you. The next question is um, their son is 30 years old. They're on the spectrum. Is this, can mm -hmm. they use their your services? Are they able to come? 
to, to uh, Eastman Institute? Great question. So I, so there are two other places, well, I have all three, three other places for adults with special needs. There is the general dentistry department, which is on the first floor of Eastman. There is the specialty care department, which is a brand new clinic on the second floor of Eastman. They are, their department is geared towards medically complex patients, as well as those with mild to moderate um, autism. There is also a third location, which is off site, off campus. It's called Culver Complex Care Center, and that is on 905 Culver Road. They specifically treat only special needs patients. So the difference between that and specialty care, they see more um, moderate to, to, to severely autistic patients. They also see, um, uh, I would say, more um, medically complex patients solely because at that building, most of the patients in that building also have a doctor that is right down the hall from the dental department. So for us, that's a closed loop of care. That would be the other place where they could go. But any of those three departments would be a good choice um, for your child's care. Great, thank you. It looks like we have one last question, but um, I'll go ahead and, and ask it. But just to let everyone know, you can still continue to ask questions. But um, the <laughs> last question right now is, they have several children. One has a disability. Yes. Can all of their children come to one dentist or one location, such as the Eastman Institute for Oral Health? We absolutely can. We routinely see siblings, um, and we can either schedule them right after the other, so they're all with one provider, or we can spread them out amongst providers so you have a shorter appointment time, whatever works for you. But that is something we do, in fact, offer at the pediatric department. Great, thank you. I am getting um, several people saying thank you so much. This was really helpful. Um, a couple of people loved the three-sided toothbrush, so they were saying thank Me you too. so much. Um, I do want to remind um, everyone that within the handouts is also the social story, so feel free to please, you know, um, click on that in the handout section, and so you can have that as your takeaway. Again, I put my email in the chat, so if you have very specific questions and you want uh, Aaron's contact, feel free to um, let me know, and I will connect you with Aaron. Erin, I have lots of people saying thank you so much. This was very informative. We I am so glad. It was a pleasure for you to have me, Laura, and I'm so glad that I could reach you guys and talk to you about something that is important for you guys and your children, which is oral health. Great. Thank you so much, Erin, for being here with us today and for a wonderful collaboration. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And um, have a great day. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy.